Hello racing fans and a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for this Friday the 12th of April where we always, uh, uh, when it comes to our local South African racing, race in Cabeja at the Fairview track. Well, some important news coming in just prior to the recording of the show. Uh, to you, the valued racing fan, I hope that you are well and looking forward to a wonderful start of the weekend. So that in important information that has just come through, and I'm just speaking to Grant Paddock, our expert and analyst down in Cabeja, about this. As we are about to record the show, it's just come through that the race meeting has now changed from the turf track to the poly track. So take note of that. So we have caught it uh, timelessly here uh, before the recording of the show. So Grant Paddock has studied and given his selections for the turf track. So we'll have a chat to him during the course of the race uh, preview and see if there are any changes because the goalpost has moved. So take note of that a surface change from the turf to the poly. Okay, let's introduce Grant. And Grant, um, you know, how are you doing firstly? Uh, these, um, first of all, good morning and good morning, Panthers. All good this side. We've had um, the same weather. It's pretty much been right through the country. Rain, and uh, I was pretty much expecting this change of surface. You know, I know that track extremely well. And uh, I watched it on Friday after two and a half moles. It was kicking up very badly. I thought, well, after an extra 49 there's no chance they're going to be racing on, on, on grass, that's for sure. So uh, it's poly. Thank goodness for the poly. Otherwise, they would be staying in their boxes. They're giving the trainers an opportunity and the owners an opportunity to make some money. So uh, let's uh, try and get the punters off to a, a winning start to the weekend. It's going to be difficult. We've got two juvenile races around the turn. I'm not just sure if many of these juveniles have actually been on the surface. I know they haven't raced on it. So it will be very, very interesting. But uh, let's see what we can do these Okay, what we're going to do is that, you know, I often uh, take down the betting and give you the horses in single figures. All that's going to change now. So uh, we're not going to read out the betting grant. Uh, but what we will do is that uh, we will continue to remind the guys of the surface change, etc. And always remember that if you have done an anti-post bet prior to the change of surface, that bet does not stand. So always remember that because I've had... Uh, a few phone calls uh, during the course of the week when they moved that race meeting uh, from uh, Sunday to Monday. Uh, that was Hollywood Bed Scottsville. Even though it was a meeting moved, I see some of the guys, they did uh, get that money refunded into their account rather than the bet standing. So take note of that as well. Okay, race number one, Grant, a maiden juvenile plate over 1,000 meters. And uh, we ha have taken down the scratchings at this point in time. That's at the time of recording. Number five is a scratching year. So there are six runners that go to post. We're on the poly track. It's over a thousand meters. What do you make of this first race, uh, Grant? Uh, because uh, with a worldly now out at the time of scratching, I think it does leave the door wide open for horse number one. That's Yeni and Gavin Smith. Yeah, fortunately not part of the bipod this race. Um, this horse in Nushko's World is a very nice colt. He, he ran two, uh, two uh, the second one was a very, very good run. His first run was just as good. He's been beaten by greenness only in his first starts. And um, that's obviously the biggest concern in this race. A thousand meters on the poly, around the turn. Uh, and when I mean green, you go back and watch this horse's replays. He, he's all over the place. So um, it could be a, a factor. I don't think he's learned how to race yet. Um, and now first run on the poly. He's probably going to be as short as 8 or 9 to 10 with a scratching of world, worldly. Um, difficult to take that kind of a price on a juvenile that is so green. Uh, I have tipped him to win it. Um, I did tip him even before worldly was in the race. I, I think he's a progressive horse. But unfortunately, with a change of surface, it now leaves it completely open. I have tipped him to win it. This Philly Yellow Jacket put a line to her last run. She wasn't right. Um, came back coughing and um, they fixed it up. She's doing decent work at home. I don't think she'll have too much complaints. With the, with the surface she has been on it and she's been quite well on it and she's a filly that shows a lot of speed she could get away from them early and actually hang on so um, I've, I've tipped Anushka's world from Yellow Jacket there's been no talk for the for the first time I have Anna Gray very well bred horse but that looks like it's going to be needing further with, with its breeding out of Heavenly Blue and then First Lord who ran a decent fourth so these for me one seven six and three 
One, seven, six, and three. Play around those numbers. Maybe you can try and get a trifecta quartet with a minimum spend there. Race number one doesn't form part of the exotics. There are nine races on the go on this Friday. So the exotics will begin in race number two. It will be the start of the bar pot. The time to jot down there is 12.40, 20 to one. And this is a juvenile plate for fillies, a maiden juvenile plate that is over 1,400 meters. Uh, this race, Grant, when I had a look at it, there is some form to play around here. So I don't know how many horses you will be suggesting for the guys to include in the bipod because I think uh, that it, it could be a highly competitive race between uh, runners that bring some form into the race. Yeah, 100%. I do, I do think the, the form runners are going to be competitive here. There's one horse that I will want to add in now that it's moved to Polly. Um, just uh, quickly, there's been a, a distance change from 1,400 to 1,300. So fortunately, they're not jumping on the top camera at the 1,400. Uh, they're straight down the back straight. Um, I've, I have gone for the three form runners, Eat, Pray, Love, Million Reasons, and Queen of Jazz. But there's one horse I'd like to talk about and add in. This horse, Gold Quest, number five. Um, this horse was backed very strongly in both starts um very very good sand horse and with the movement over to polly uh, at a big price uh, i'm sure i'm definitely think this horse has to go in um because you know other things can go wrong for the horses that uh, this, these are two-year-olds as well so please add in gold quest but um the bipod the, the bipod numbers that i've given are three seven and nine but i would also add in the five into that play million reasons nice little filly uh, i don't think she she's also she was a little bit green in the last two runs um she would have preferred it over 1400 they're bringing it back 1300 might not suit her she's a filly that's going to go a mile plus queen of jazz improved dramatically last time out uh Deez, and she's got a decent draw with yenny up and um she's probably the one to beat and eat pray love you know she's been holding solid form she's definitely not 11 to 10 shot i can tell you that right now she's drawn out at eight so she's got a bit of work to do from that draw um i actually prefer queen of jazz to eat pray love and then million reasons and gold quest I just want to ask you about one horse here, Grant. I mean, this horse is going to be at a price. Would you consider including a horse like four? Fire Festival. I think there's improvement to come over the distance, Grant. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, Sharon doesn't let uh, uh, choose her babies up very early, and she lets them come on with runs. So um, this is probably one of those horses who will improve with a, with a trip. Uh, I do see it's got 60 kilograms, and Louis not riding it, so they probably prefer a bit of Maxi Girl to to Fire Festival. Otherwise, he would have been on that. But uh, Fire Festival can definitely improve, especially over the trip. He's probably looking for a touch further, and they'll probably will want it to get into a 14 mile as soon as possible. But um, yeah, this and. Uh, these it was two year olds around the turn on a different surface for the first time. Anything can happen. I'm I'm hoping the form lines stand up. Um, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. Three, five, seven, and nine. That's a numerical order. Grand Paddock's numbers is giving you four horses and hopefully with those four, he can double up in the bar pop. He mentioned race number two, a distance change over 1,300 meters. Well, races two, three, and nine are the races that you'll have a distance change on the poly track over 1,300 meters. So this is over 1,300 meters, the start of the place accumulator grant. It's an open maiden for fillies and mares. Uh, at the time of recording, we just took down the scratchings now. Numbers two and three are out. I don't know whether that is going to help you try to narrow this down, but this race, Grant, yeah, you know, when I had a look at the betting when the race meeting was on the turf, I think they were betting seven to two the field. The horse that they had on top was number five at seven to two and number six at four to one. I don't know how much a change there will be now that they've changed the surface, but can you help us out to try and minimize the spend in, in the first leg of the PA? Yeah, these we're gonna have to. Yeah, uh, in my bipods, I, I had numbers one, six, and seven. Um, the clear force, the number one I, on the grass, I would have said yes. Now on the poly, back to a thirteen hundred meters. I've gone off it completely. She really didn't enjoy the surface last time out. Went favourite. She hasn't got enough pace to go with them early on, and and um, with sixty one on her back, I'm now well, going over to poly. I'm going to brass her. Uh, the five horse, you'll probably know more about those form lines, how decent they are. Uh, I'll very de grace, and then uh, cabaret. You know that Cape Town 
form is strong enough to win a race like this. Uh, Gavin brought out a horse called He Knows last time out, one by six and a half, uh, with slightly weaker form than this. So if Cabaret brings that Cape Town form, she'll be very, very hard to beat. And if she takes to the surface, Equilibrium, I know she would have probably preferred the 1400. She's doing very good work at a big price. She's got to go into the play. And uh, we're going to be adding in Havre de Grace as well. Uh, I'm sure you'll let us know a little bit more about those form lines. But um, I think Cabaret is the right horse in this race. Yeah, the, the way this horse has been running from uh, the Doug Campbell's table, I've chatted to Doug about this horse on a few occasions, Grant, and uh, he liked the horse. I don't know the, the reason for the move because the horse looked like she was ready to actually win here in KZN, and uh, that the fact that she gets the 1,600-meter trip comfortably, I suspect a confident ride from Marco van Rensburg over the shorter distance of 1,300. It wouldn't surprise me to see her come first up and win in the province, uh, Grant, so... I would include her in all bets. But you found us a nice rough year. Wow, you know, you spoke highly about number seven, Equilibrium. You know, I don't know what price on, on the poly now, but on the turf, that was 25 to 1. Yeah, she'll probably be the same price on the on on the on the poly D. She's she's not a bad filly. She came here, she ran a very good race first time out. She's got quite a few issues, but um, I spoke to Kelly this morning and they've 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 got her they've got her sound, they've got her well, and it's unfortunately they've stepped back a hundred meters. I must tell you that. Um, but I, I think if it was a fourteen mile, I would have been a lot more confident. But um, she's doing good work at home, so uh, and she's a filly that can get up there. So expect a decent run from her. But I still think um, the six and the five are going to be hard horses to beat. Well, Grant has found a big value in the past with some horses that he's given us as some tremendous odds. And maybe he's found another year for your trifectas and quartets if it doesn't win number seven, Equilibrium. But uh, numbers one, six and seven were his numbers for the bipod. But as you heard from him, number one now, he's gone off that after the surface change. And he's siding with numbers five and six with number seven being the outsider. Nice way to sum up that story. First leg of the place accumulator there, race number three. Race number four is the big one, Grant. It is the start of the pick six. It's over 1,600 meters. And uh, there are no scratchings at the time of recording. So we've got nine runners that will go to post. It's over 1,600 meters. Uh, this race, again, you can work with form. Horses that are coming into the race fit, well, and holding their form. Uh, the runner that I'm leaning towards, I'm hoping that it's part of your play is number three meta but numbers five and six those look to be the principles as well um these i agree with you with regards to the five and six meta you just got to watch if it's going to get scratched last time we moved to poly they did take her out fully against the boys carrying 59 and a half um she comes out of that same, I think it's Pembroke form line or, or Hawk Circle form line, and then she's she's not badly in at all. Um, the favourite year is Legal Thriller. The, um, he, he got his rating racing against three holes, and he hasn't really brought it against the older horses. 61 on his back. Uh, he does like the poly, though. I can tell you that. He, he, he ran second, a good second, two runs back. Uh, 61 kilos might be a bit of a, 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 a weight to carry around against these older horses. I like Pembroke and Hawk Circle. My value bet is, Pembroke, is Hawk Circle on the day. Uh, I do think Pembroke should probably beat him, but I think the Michelin Yard have got a very good stand here. The Charioteer is another one from a one draw with a nice uh, galloping weight he's got to go into the pick six um, and then uh, as I say legal thriller is probably got to, with a Richard for refact has got to go in as well but at, at my bipod I've only gone five and six and uh, pick six we're going to have to add in the, the one and the nine and just have a look if Meta runs tomorrow Yep, keep an eye on the scratchings, but Grand Paddock thinks Kelly Mitchley is the stable to follow here in race number four. Then on to the fifth race, which will be uh, jackpot one. It's a middle stakes over 1,600 metres. And as you've uh, been listening into this race by race preview, we usually give you the betting of horses in single figures. The reason that we're not doing so is because there has been a surface change and they've priced up or the betting that I've taken down is for the turf. So race number five, Grant, uh, number nine is a scratching. So at the time of recording, we've got nine runners that go to post here. Uh, can we begin with a horse like Kingdom of Heaven and maybe get uh, your thoughts on uh, how this one is going to go first up in the province? Yeah, Deez is definitely my first choice in the race. Um, they think a hell of a lot about him. Very, very strong horse. Um, if he gets cover from that one draw, 
Uh, he's a massive runner. He's run against far stronger than this. He's shown them very, very good work. The one draw is obviously a bonus, but he has to get cover. Otherwise, it could be it could end up being a runaway. Um, the likes of the Mauritian has also got to go in. Unfortunately, now got it all to do from that draw nine on the poly. That's not going to help him. Makachev won a good race on grass, drawn out in the bush. So, um, uh, And then the horse that was quite interesting. You'll probably know he ran in, in, in Durban on the poly. He ran third, two runs back. This horse, faithful day. Um, he's got to be a bit of a runner with Louis up from a good draw but um, I really do like the source Kingdom of Heaven uh, I'm not sure if the step back to 1300 is going to suit but those strong horses they go a little bit quicker than in the 1300 and if he can Samanga can just settle him he'll run them down down the lane there's no doubt about that so uh, I'm quite strong on the seven um, and then you got to add in the two four and six yeah this horse number four fateful day uh, Grant I'll just tell you that you know, although he hasn't won in some time, I was keeping a very close eye on his rating here in KZN and he was dropping steadily. At one stage he was a 93, but uh, he's actually come down nicely now to an 86. He's a horse that I'll keep a very close eye on in Kaveha, uh, be it on the poly track or the turf. I don't think either surface uh, uh, is, uh, you know, any of a concern for him. He's a quite a versatile horse, so... Keep an eye and see how he goes first up. Whether he wins first time out, I don't know if that's possible, but he's a lovely horse. Grand Paddock, 2, 6 and 7, but you have to like his comments on horse number 7, Kingdom of Heaven. Then on to the 6th race. This is the Fairview Flying 5. Uh, it is over 5 furlongs, 1,000 meters. And uh, usually we go to the best weighted column in these type of races. Uh, are there any scratchings here at the time of recording? None, Grant. So we'll take it at all 11 run. Uh, I'll just read out the best weighted column for our valued racing fans. It's top by number one, Cruise Control at a 115. Then number two, Cliff Top at a 108. Uh, number three, Fire Alley at a 102. And then we got joint numbers five and six at a 101. Uh, you know, I... This horse cruise controlled, now that I have a look at his profile, you know, he's won nine times. Six of them on the turf, so it means that three of them have been on the poly track. Um, what's your thoughts now on, on the meeting change? Is he still the horse to beat? Uh, D's without a doubt the horse to beat from a one draw. I think they could have run down the tar road and he'll still beat the slot. <laughs> um, very, very, very quick horse from a one draw. Um, very hard to beat, I can tell you that. There's nothing that can go with him uh, over the five furlongs. Yeah, I actually think he's better on poly than what it is grass, even though the stats say he's, he's won six. He's just won six because there hasn't been any poly thousands for him. Um, but this race is uh, very well suited, very well weighted, um, good draw, strong jock. <laughs> Napvet, uh, I think he'll start closer to six to ten, maybe. Um, I'll make the danger to him. His stable companion, Dell's Echo now that it's moved to Polly. Very good Polly horse, very good thousand meter horse. Um, lovely horse for your exactors with you, Zay, from a good draw. And uh, and then Clifftop, um, you know, Clifftop, you don't know which horse is coming to the races, but he'll be he'll be in the firing line, there's no doubt about it. Fire Alley, too short for him. Winter Lake is too short, and I don't think that surface suits him either. Cool Winter will be running on late, but Cruise Control, Banker in all bets, and um, starting of all the uh, multiples. Well, you had it from Grant, and he's usually on the mark when he finds the banker bet for the exotics. Regardless of the surface change, uh, Grant Paddock firmly in the camp, confidently with number one, cruise control. Right, we move along to race number six now, Grant. It's the East Cope, uh, East Cape Oaks. It's a listed race over 2,000 meters, and uh, no scratchings at the time of uh, recording and at the time of uh, the surface change. Uh, the best weighted column here, Grant, is very tight. Uh, numbers 1 and 2 are joint at 85, number 3 at 83, 4 at 82, and then there is a gap to number 5 at 77. So it's all in numerical order uh, with regards to their rating. Now, you've been on the mark um, whenever I've spoken to you uh, about the source Joy and Peace, like you were last time out. Uh, she was an effortless winner that day. Are we following up with her uh, over this 2,000 meter trip? Because uh, for most and the majority of this field, um, they'll be trying the distance for the first time, Grant. Yeah, 
besides public benefit, and I think Damastar has been the trip as well. Um, the rest haven't been the trip. Uh, Joy and Peace, she's just getting better as she gets further on, and uh, very, very good filly. She really is, and uh, I've got no problems with her being on the poly surface. She's run on it before when it was over 1,300 metres. She ran a good race. 2,000 metres on Polly, um, very, very strong on her. She's also a banker for me. Pick six, if you want to add in the, the, the Snaith horse, um, Epicleros, you, you can, which a lot of those uh, Cape Town horses, when they get to our Polly, it's a different story. You know, they haven't got the pace to go on it. We, we really stretch along over here, and um, this is not going to be a slow run race, I can guarantee you that. Uh, so, um, yeah, very strong on joy and peace. I think she'll win and win well. Uh, banker for me, players that don't like to bank it, two legs in a row can add in the Snaith horse, but um, joy and Pete's very strong, Epicleros to run second, Public Benefit third, and Demo Star to run fourth. Yeah, and keep an eye on the scratchings. You'll never know. Snape may decide to scratch now that there is a surface change here with his horse, Epicleros, and then you'll see number two, Joy and Peace, shorten uh, even further into the red, I would suspect, uh, number two, Joy and Peace, if the number four horse is scratched. But Grant is going bang, bang here, races six and seven. I like that. I like the confidence coming through. We've got two more races to go, Grant, and hopefully uh, that confidence of yours can, can filter through races eight and nine. It's over 2,000 meters. This is a derby plate. And again, uh, looking at the field at the time of recording, 11 runners, no scratchings, not going to give you the betting. Um, the best weighted column, nine and 10 are at 82. One is an at 80. 11 at 79, and then the gap to number two, King of Seville at a 74. I looked at this field, Grant, and this is one race that I don't trust at all. Uh, I tried to make head or tails of it. I don't know. They, they've actually included Phillies taking on the boys, which makes it a bit tricky for me. And uh, can we get a result here, or am I reading too much into the race? Um, geez, listen, it is a tricky race. I can tell you that probably the weakest derby plate I've, I've seen in Port Elizabeth for many, many years. Mm. Um, there's a lot of horses here that don't stay. Uh, Vice Voter, you know, his, his, his favourite, he, he, 1,400 metres is an absolute stretch for him. Bob Lee, Swagger, Bridgerton, is a little Pisces. There's a lot of horses that don't stay here. And um, it, that always ends up throwing a tricky result because they go too quick and then they stop and then there's interference. Gideon's daughter is definitely, her last run was behind um, that filly in the previous race of Allen's and... Uh, <laughs> She definitely got the right form. She got the right weight of her 82. Uh, they've definitely found the right side. You didn't want to take on the Oaks field. This was definitely the right field for Gideon's daughter. She goes well on the surface as well. Very well, in fact. She's way better on Polly than what she is on grass. So um, she's definitely my first pick. Mo Flo would have been my first pick if it stayed on grass. Very good run, uh, post-maiden run last time out behind a decent horse. And um, so he's got to go in now. Draw 11 is going to it's going to make it very difficult for him. Very tricky race. Uh, horse like Women's World will definitely be there. She has a decent Cape Town form and she needed her first outing here. But it uh, all sounds so to uh, Gideon's daughter. I've tipped her to win it from Mo Flo, uh, Women's World and Silver Hunt. 9-3, Women's World being horse number 11. And then his fourth choice, uh, Grand Paddock, will be Silver Hunt number 10. So 9, 3, 11, and 10. Maybe you can play around those numbers in whatever bet you are playing in race number 8, be it the last pick 3 on the card, which starts in race number 7, the last double, which starts in race number 8, or the jackpot, pick 6, and place accumulator. Let's go on to the lucky last grant. And you've been lucky in the last, whenever you've uh, vied for a quartet or your roving bankers, you seem to be on the money. Can you be on this Friday? It is a classified stakes over 1,400 meters. And again, we remind you, the valued racing fan, that this preview being done early, but we know that it is a surface change. We are racing on the turf. We've kept an eye on the scratchings. There are no scratchings at the time of recording. 11 runners go to post. What are we doing here in the ninth race to close things off, Grant? Uh, because you've given us some serious confidence earlier on uh, in the race meeting or to the, say in the middle part of that exotics. How are we going to end things off in race number nine? Uh, please, this is very, very tricky. It's the normal P. Now they've moved the surface as well, so it's going to make it even more difficult. I went for meet at the Windsor. 
Um, holding steady form, good draw, good jock, um, purely because of he's holding a decent form line. Um, this was captain's walk. I think he probably would have preferred it a little bit um, further, but he's got to be in the back end of quartets. Um, CFT has won well last time out and coming back from its post-maiden run, so we've got to see where we are with her. Charlie Malone's another one that has um, got half decent form and, you know, they punch him regularly, but um, I see he's drawn out at 11, so he's got all the work to do. Moosey's um, opted to ride Destiny's Angel, who won very well on last time out from a one draw. That's got to be a bit of a runner uh, as well. Gunsmoke and Horsefly. Horsefly's post maiden run wasn't that bad, so um, he's got to be a bit of a runner here, two Ds, but this is definitely a field where you need to go as wide as possible in a pick six. I have gone for Meet at the Windsor to win it, but there's a couple of horses that have got to go in. A lovely race to get a quartet, there's no doubt, with two roving bankers. I'd probably rover banker, Horsefly, and Meet at the Windsor, the two career horses, and add in the likes of Gunsmoke, Passion to Wally, Destiny's Angel, and um, Captain's Walk. Horse fly and meet and the angel are numbers one and six. Grant, you haven't mentioned my horse yet. I'm not going to go let this horse go loose, uh, especially for the quartet. Uh, number 10, Iron Tail. What you make of him? Um, geez, I doubt very much that he'll run. Uh, he, he hasn't run on the... He has run here on the poly before and it wasn't a very good run. And I think twice he's been scratched. So I doubt very much that um, he'll run him, especially from a 10 draw as well. So we we just got to look at that one, Dees. But um, yeah, he, he's definitely better on grass. Better on grass, may not run. Keep an eye on the scratchings there on number 10, Iron Tail. But Grant has given you his roving bankers, uh, numbers 1 and 6. He's siding with the Allen Creer forces here to close things off in race number 9. And again, we remind you of that distant change. Races 2, 3 and 9, the distance change now will be 1,300 meters. So race 9 is over 1,300 meters on the poly track. Okay, Grant, I know that you've structured this exotic... Uh, studying the race card for the race meeting to be on the turf. But nevertheless, we're going to bring it up. And if you want to make any changes whilst you're talking through this exotic, I'm sure you've got your numbers in front of you, you can do so. So this exotic was given by Grant Paddock, studying the race card for the turf. But Grant, we've moved to the poly track and take it away. All right, D, thank you very much. Um, let me just do a quick thing here. All right, 100%. My best bet race six, number one, Cruise Control. My value bet race four, number five, Hawk Circle. And my suggested bets, the Bipot. And it goes as follows. Um, three, seven, and nine. By it was one, six, and seven. We're now making it five, six, and seven in the second leg. By five and six. By two, six, seven. By banker one. By banker two for 54 rand. Okay, the one change now is leg number two, where Grant had one, six, and seven, and he's just changed that. He hasn't changed the cost of the perm. He's just uh, excluded number one and included number five. And if you work out that spend for that bipod, it'll be three times three, which is nine, nine times two, which is 18, 18 times three, which is uh, 54, and uh, banker banker so it's 54 rand grant paddocks by pot is giving your best bet and your value bet grant as always thank you for your uh valuable time and uh, hopefully that excellent form of yours continues on this friday regardless of the surface change thank you very much Dees, and good luck to the punters just another thing the punters have just got to keep an eye on those scratchings scratch uh, scratchings close at nine o'clock tomorrow morning so let them have a good look maybe before they structure their best thank you very much and go well bye-bye okay that is our analyst our expert in Kabeja, none other than grant paddock on behalf of the entire team at gallup tv grant paddock myself Dees dine and to you the valued racing fan hopefully it turns out to be a very successful day for you on this Friday and you kick the weekend off with a blast. Find all the winners and it turns out to be a profitable day for you. Until we meet again, you take care. Salani